This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Supertraining Gym, the strongest gym in the West, waiting outside of Makuni Sushi Restaurant in Davis, California for lots and lots of fish. But we have questions to answer today for the Power Project. And uh, the first one comes from my cousin, Christine Bell, in, uh, in New York. At least I think she still lives in New York. Um, Anyway, Christine had a question about the Olympic lifters, uh, what she's seeing them do on TV. She's asking the question, why are they holding their breath and turning their faces uh, purple when they go to... You can go ahead. <laughs> um, why, why are their faces uh, turning purple? Why are they taking air into their body and holding it? What are they, what are they trying to do? Um, and would it make more sense for them to actually breathe and get air uh, to run to get oxygen to their muscles while they're doing the lift. Well, what they're really trying to do is they're trying to get themselves tight. They're trying to create tightness. They're trying to have something to lift off of. Um, if they just uh, were to let all their air out at the bottom of the lift before they ever started their lift, they would not be able to, comp they would not be able to uh, maintain the correct uh, uh, intra-abdominal pressure. That what they're trying to do is they're trying to push their stomachs out a lot of them have uh, big bellies, or a lot of the big guys, but even the smaller guys uh, can still do the same maneuver. You can try it yourself. People at home out there can try it yourself. Just hang down like you're going to try to touch your toes. Really just relax and blob out and let your arms be all long and gangly. Take a nice deep breath of air into your stomach, not into your face. <laughs> Take a nice deep breath of air into your stomach and then push your belly uh, downward and outward against your legs. Even if you don't have a large stomach, you'll still feel that pressure. And uh, with these Olympic lifters and what power lifters have done for years is they keep that air in their stomach and they create tightness and they lift off of that tightness. That tightness helps to lock everything in. They lock their lower back in and, they're and then they're ready to lift. There's actually been some science behind it and some mumbo jumbo behind it. Uh, but that's not my style to, uh, to talk like that. So basically, they're, what they're doing is they're filling their stomachs up with air, making their body like this rather than being like this. They're just staying real tight. That's a fat hand, isn't it? Look at that thing. Imagine getting punched by that thing. It probably wouldn't even hurt. It's like a pillow. Anyway, we've got another question today from Brian Williams, who has a hammy question. Ham hocks. I blew a hammy out years ago, squatting 1,041, and it was quite painful. By the way, Christine, good to hear from you. Don't be a stranger. About the hammy, this guy says that he hurt his hammy. It's an ongoing battle. Uh, he has a lot of pain, a lot of soreness and swelling. And it's four weeks after he got hurt. Sounds to me like you're re-aggravating that thing, which is very easy to do with a hamstring. Hamstring injuries tend to linger, and they tend to linger way up high by your arse. And that's probably what's happening to you. Uh, sometimes it's on the inside, more towards the groin, and sometimes a little bit more to the outside, uh, towards the IT band. Very uncomfortable, giant pain in the ass, literally. <laughs> um, what I suggest to you is to go to uh, uh, Kelly Sturette's MobilityWad.com. Check that out for some information on uh, some different things to do for your hamstring. But you want to know how to maintain strength. And you want to know how to not lose a ton of strength in, the, in this process of recovery. You really only have about one or two options, in my opinion. Um, squatting can be done, but it has to be done light. Um, and it has to be done for low repetitions. People make the big mistake. They make a huge mistake of thinking that when you go, when you get hurt, that you're going to want to do higher reps and that's because they want to try to keep the percentage much lower but really what you're trying to do is you want to try to um, do, do uh, lower repetitions so you're not under the barbell for too long so you're not under tension too long and so you don't lose your form so sets of five and uh, I would work your way up to the, about the 50 percent range I would, I would suggest squatting high if you can squat, you might be in really bad shape, I'm not sure. If you have the ability to squat, go to about 50% and um, make sure you're keeping a real good upright posture. Any leaning 
any fatiguing, any uh, good morning style squat is going to kill you. Squat high for sets of five and uh, maybe do about three to five sets of five reps. Uh, some other things you can do, deadlifts are out of the question, however, you might be able to do some very, very light uh, rack deadlifts. And when I say very light, if you can deadlift uh, 300 or more, um, I mean, if you can round, deadlift around 300, I'd suggest you only use a plate. If you can deadlift around 400, I'd suggest maybe use two plates. So again, we're in that 50% range, and I would say sets of three or something like that. Um, but odds are that may be a little bit too painful as well, uh, given your description. So <clears throat> two main options you really have. You can probably do a little bit of squatting, but the two other uh, options in addition to that are sled dragging or pushing a prowler. Uh, the prowler is really going to be your best option. You want to do a nice, strong, powerful walk, and you want to um, walk with the handles, the high handles. If you don't have a prowler, you're screwed. you got to walk with the sled, and you want to do a Frankenstein walk. Legs are real stiff. I can't really demonstrate it, so I'm the only one filming. Um, but uh, you want to do a Frankenstein walk. If you have a prowler, with every step that you take, you want to try to stick your foot underneath the machine, underneath the prowler. Prowler is a sled-like device that has two long handles, and you want to push on those long handles, and you want to try to get your leg way out, nice and straight, underneath the handle, underneath the, uh, underneath the metal piece there. Uh, each time you get a nice long stride. If you don't have that, get a sled. If you don't have a sled, get a tire. Hook a rope around it. Figure it out. <laughs> uh, the other thing you can do, if you don't have any of those options available, you can also walk a hill. Find a hill. Uh, locally, try to find a hill. Step ups uh, may be effective, um, but they probably uh, it would probably be too, a little bit too difficult to do at the moment. So um, your main your main uh, options you got a sled. You got a prowler, you got a hill to run, right? So you got three things you can mess around with there. You also have a squat that you can mess around with and possibly, if you're feeling okay-ish, uh, you can hit up those uh, rack pulls. But uh, any, whoa, that sounded like a train, didn't it? Anyway, I'm starving. I gotta go pick up my sushi. I might as well face the facts. I'm a uh, fat kid at heart no matter what even if I, even after losing 30 pounds anyway that is it from supertraining.tv hope you learned a lot later